Hi, I built my first uh, name tag with blinking LED lights on it oh, a couple of years ago when I was going to a, uh, a model railroad layout that the uh, one of the clubs I belonged to was participating in. And I simply took a, uh, a circuit board that I had designed for a whole other uh, process. It was for a, a blinking light on a helmet that I wear when I'm riding my bicycle. Anyway, uh, I decided a couple of months ago that it might be neat to redesign this, develop a custom circuit board. I've got a bunch of them here that I had made. And the circuit board is designed so that when I take a, um, a laser cut crossing si uh, signal, it fits right on the back so that the LEDs that go into the, uh, uh, the holes line up with contacts there. The circuit board is hidden behind the part here that says South Hills Model Railroad Club. And a battery case for a uh, 2032 uh, watch battery button cell goes down here. So the whole thing when you're done with it looks something like this. This is the uh, the entire circuit. I haven't attached it to the, uh, to the crossing yet. But it looks something like that and works rather nicely. In addition to just doing the blinking that you see here, I've also put a couple of jumpers on the back that allow you to change it. If I take a jumper and put it on this side, instead of blinking, they kind of uh, ramp up and down on each side, more like ditch lights. And if I put it on the other side, right now I have it programmed so that it'll give you a single LED um, Mars light. If you put that a white uh, LED in there, it would look rather nice as a Mars light, perhaps on a different uh, base. This is a, uh, a diesel engine with ditch lights on it, same basic circuit on the back, and it works rather nicely. What I'd like to do in this video is give you an overview of how I designed the crossing signal, cut it out on the laser cutter, how I designed the circuit board, had that fabricated, how I programmed the microcontroller that's on there, and how I put the whole thing together. Uh, so we'll take a couple of minutes to do just that. This is Corel Draw, and as you can see, I have three different items on the screen right now. This is a uh, test uh, cut that I did to determine the best size hole for these five millimeter LEDs that were over here. This is a, uh, a diesel engine uh, name badge that I experimented with. It's got space down here for two three millimeter LEDs for white ditch lights. And of course, over here is the, uh, the name tag for the crossing. Now, the important thing about this, it's actually done in three different colors. If I zoom in closely, you'll see that this yellow is, is used just for the score lines that kind of demark the boards that cross. The lettering is done in green. And the outline, the part that's going to be cut completely through, is done in black. Now, in order to send this to the laser cutter, I simply highlight it and click on this macro button up here, and that will send it directly to the laser cutter. This is the Thunder laser program that goes in between Corel Draw and the laser cutter itself. And we brought our graphic in, and you'll notice the colors are the same. There's the yellow, the black for the outline, and the green for the letters. And what we're going to do is set different parameters for each one of those colors by coming over here, and you'll see the yellow, the green, and the black I can change the yellow, uh, set it up for 180 millimeters per second. Now you recall that's a score line. That goes pretty quickly, so it'll go fast. It's going to be at 55% of max power. Max power on this machine happens to be about 77%, so that's what, uh, two-thirds or three-fourths of full power, I suppose. But again, it's just a score line. The green is the lettering. It's going to be done a little more slowly at 120 millimeters per second, same power level. But it's not going to be cut, it's going to be scanned, which means that the cutter is going to go back and forth. I'll show you that in a minute. And finally, the black, the outline, is going to be done at 5 millimeters a second, very slowly, full power, 77, and that should give us a real nice cut of the machine, or of the, uh, the image. This is a uh, simulation or a preview uh, option that you have in Thunder Laser. And what it does is it brings up the graphic, and I can click Simulate, and you'll see what happens. It goes back and forth. It's showing me that it's scanning across the letters, burning them in one line at a time, very much like a dot matrix or, or uh, inkjet printer. 
When it's done, it's going to cut the whole thing out. This is at the, uh, you'll recall, five millimeters a second and uh, full power. So when that's done, we can just exit from this. We're all ready to go. Click start and it will send it directly to the laser cutter and start the job. With a little bit of luck, this will just pop right off. You can see on the back that it's cut through. So I just gently push down, push that through, pull it up a little bit. There we go. And by removing the tape, we'll expose a nice clean layer of yellow paint. Now it's kind of a pain to take all these little pieces off, but it's a real nice way to protect the, uh, the finish. Here we have all of the parts that are going to go into the, uh, the blinker, of course, plus a, uh, um, one of the plywood or, or plastic uh, cutout frames. The circuit board holds all of the components. Here's the microcontroller over here a 470 ohm current limiting resistor that keeps the LEDs from burning out, a 10K resistor that's used for uh, one of the jumpers, a couple of the jumpers. We're going to need to put little uh, covers over some of the pins to turn those on and off. And this is the battery holder. The first thing I'm going to do is show you what to do with that. The way it is, it works just fine, but if I put a button cell at 2032 into there, it's very difficult to get out, way, way harder than I want it to be. So the first thing I like to do is to take these little arms off and just discard those. It still fits very well. Unfortunately, once it's glued to the, uh, to the frame, to the plywood or plastic, it's still very difficult to get out. So what I found, if I take a Dremel and cut a notch, Whoop. Dremel shuts down if I push it too hard. Cut a nice notch in there. Now when I put the cell in, part of it extends through that notch and I can get a little toothpick or, or paper clip or whatever to kind of push it out uh, from the end and not break the glue that's going to be on there. So a little modification, putting a notch into that holder. Okay, next thing we want to do is to put the microcontroller on. And there is a notch right here that shows you where pin 1 is. When you have the notch, pin 1 is to the left of it. So if I pick up the microcontroller, I've got a little dimple on there. And that dimple goes on pin 1, just like that. Now before we start, just as I showed in the video that I made before this one about working with surface mount components, first thing you want to do is put a little dab of solder on one of the pins. It doesn't really matter which one. I'll use pin 8, which is opposite pin 1. Get that tinned. Now I can pick up the microcontroller. Make sure pin 1 is where it belongs. Get those. Okay, they're pretty well aligned. Try to center it a little better. And now just a dab of solder on that pin number eight. Okay, that controller is, is fixed onto there and it's it looking pretty good really. Now I'm gonna go to the opposite pin and solder that one and just go right up the side. Just a little bit of patience. Now it's not unusual at all to get some solder bridges on here. 
where you have two or more pins shorted together. And I went through a, a real easy way to fix that in the prior video. As a matter of fact, I've got a, a bridge right here. What I do is I heat the bridge up, the two pins that are bridged together, and just bang it down on the, uh, the work table. And that did a pretty good job of clearing it. So they're completely clear. Okay, next thing we want to do is put another dab of solder on the 10K resistor spot. And I got a little bit of slop on here. I shouldn't have done that. I can get it off. There we go. And a little bit of solder on one of the tabs or one of the uh, pads for the 470. Now the 470 ohm resistor is so small that I have to pick it up with tweezers. And I'll place it on that little pad that has solder on it clean my iron a little bit and if I heat that up that resistor will go down on there wait a couple seconds and that's been attached I can now go to the other end of that resistor and solder that pad the 10k I can almost do with my fingers but I'll do it with the uh, the tweezers as well again lay it down and heat that up Try to get it square. And then go to the other end and solder the other pad. A little bit more. Okay, I think that flowed pretty well. Okay, next step requires that we, we grab one of the uh, one of the frames. I'll just take a let's try a plexiglass one just for fun. I'm going to put the, uh, the board temporary, I'm just going to lay it on the back, not gluing it down, I'm just laying it on the back, and I want to see where these LEDs are going to line up. Now keep in mind that the minus or negative or cathode uh, lead of the LED is the shorter one. That's going to go over there, and from the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. Lay that down. What I want to do since the two uh, negative leads are joined together, they, they both connect to the same uh, pin on the, uh, on the circuit board, I can trim those, trim this one here, trim this one here, so they overlap a little bit, put those together, and I can just run a little bit of solder onto that. There we go. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch to another board. These LEDs are a little bit tight. This is one of my earlier badges that had slightly larger holes, or smaller rather. There we go. That's much better. And put this back on. Now what I want to do is bend those two negative leads down and solder them to the two pads that are on top of the circuit board. I'm not actually putting the pins through the holes. It's not really necessary. Just get a nice flow of solder through there onto the circuit board. And those are nice, nice and uh, tightly connected. Now bend over the anode, the positive lead from one of them. Take that right up and over the first connection pad. Trim that off. Get rid of that bit of scrap. You just want that to lay on top of that and come over and solder that on and do the same thing with the one that comes from the other side. Hold that lead down. And yes, your fingers do get a little bit warm. Okay, now what we've done, let me get this out, is we've connected the two LEDs to the board, so those are ready to go. Next step is the battery, and the battery uh, has three leads. Two of them are positive, these two up here. We only need one, so I'll bend that one out of the way. This one is negative, 
and you'll see that there is a negative and a positive connection. That negative is going to go just like that, and I'm going to put a little piece of uh, lead from one of the LEDs that I cut off to connect the positive up to this one here. Before I do that, though, one thing I almost forgot. I do have an optional jumper here to turn the board on and off. And what I'd like to do before I uh, solder those on, there, there is a trace that goes between here and here that leaves this permanently on. But if I cut that trace, there's a little X there, then the jumper will act as an on-off switch. So I'm going to take just a little high-speed bit on there, and I'm cutting between those pins. There we go. Now I can solder this battery, uh, battery holder on, and I can put the jumper in a little bit later and have that turn on and off. Okay, the negative pin goes there. Get a little more solder. Whoop, didn't get quite enough on. Okay, that's pretty well connected, and I'll take one of these little scraps that I cut off from one of these. What we're looking at now is the program for the microcontroller. It's in Microcode Studio running Pick Basic Pro, and the chip is set here to a 12F683. And I'm not going to go into detail about the program right now, but I'll put this on my webpage at trainelectronics.com if you want to take a closer look at it. The important thing is there's a loop right here called top, and in there it looks at the jumpers. If the jumpers are set one way, it goes to crossing. If they're set another way, it goes to ditch. If they're set another way, it goes to the Mars light. And the routines for the crossing, Mars light, and the ditch are down here. Very simple piece of software, works real well. Once you have it set up, you click on compile and program. It compiles it brings up another dialog box, and if I click on this little icon, it'll send that program directly to the chip using something called in-circuit serial program. I'll show you that in a minute. And that's really all there is to the software end of it. Not very complex at all. Okay, we have a, uh, a processor here that has not been programmed. You notice the battery has been inserted into the circuit because it has to have power. And this is my programmer. And I have an ICSP in-circuit serial programming uh, cable connected to it. And I simply plug that into the four holes that are marked ICSP on the circuit board. And you'll notice it's not blinking right now. If I go back to the programming uh, software that we saw earlier, click on Program, it's sending the code to the chip. And now it's done and it's blinking. So we programmed it successfully.